Okay, in this video I want to talk about deriving the quadratic formula. Um, and the idea is when you have a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, a lot of people know that they can find solutions to this equation, um, if there are any, using the formula negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, and I've, I've had a couple people now ask me where this comes from, um, this quadratic formula, so um, I think it's kind of interesting, so let's talk about where it comes from here. Okay, so what we want to do is find a solution to the equation ax squared plus bx plus c. And the technique that I'm going to use on this one, um, we're going to use what's called completing the square. Okay, I'm not going to, you know, do a big discourse on how to complete the square. I do have videos on here about that if you're interested. Um, so assuming you know how to complete the square, what we do is, um, again, we group our x terms together. So I'm going to group the x terms together, plus c equals 0. And what you do is you factor the coefficient. Whatever the coefficient on x squared is, we have to factor that out. So I'm going to pull an a out, and I'll be left with x squared plus, well, to make the algebra work out, I would have to turn this into b divided by a times x. Because again, if I distribute, I'll get ax squared. The a's will cancel out. I'll be left with bx plus c, he's just chilling out. We're not doing anything with it, okay? We didn't factor anything out of the c term, so we don't have to do anything to the c term. Now, completing the square says we take, okay, so we throw some extra stuff inside of here, and it says what we do is we take one half of whatever the number in front of x is, so that's one half of b over a, well, that's just b over 2a, and then it says we square that. That means we have to square the top and square the bottom. If you square the top, you get b squared. If you square uh, the bottom, you'll get 4a squared. So that's the new thing that we throw in there, is b squared over 4a squared. Okay, so that's kind of the extra bit when you do completing the square in this case. Um, again, though, what I'm going to have to do here Okay, so everything's not equal just yet. Um, I've got to I've got to be a little more careful here. I've still got my plus c hanging out, but if you distribute this out, I'll get my ax squared. I'll get my bx term. My plus c is still there, but I'm going to get something extra when I multiply my a times the b squared plus, or excuse me, the a times the b squared over 4a squared. If I multiply this out, I'll be left with b squared on top one of the a's will cancel out, so I'll just have 4a on the other part. So really I added the number b squared over 4a to the left side. To keep things even, I'm going to have to add b squared over 4a to the other side as well. Okay, so that's why I'm doing this part now. And it says what we do at this point is, okay, so we leave the a alone out front, the point of completing the square is that now you can write the stuff um, in parentheses as a perfect square. And whatever half of the middle term is, that's how this will factor out. So you can multiply out x plus b over 2a times x plus b over 2a. Um, we will get the stuff back in parentheses, x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared. The other thing I'm going to do is I've got this b squared over 4a. I'm going to go ahead and subtract this c term from both sides. Now the next thing I'm going to do to get rid of the a is I'm going to divide both sides by a. So I'll get x plus b over 2a squared equals, if I divide both sides by a, um, or you can think about equivalently, I'm multiplying both sides by 1 over a, I'll get b squared over 4a squared minus c over a on the right hand side. Okay, so we're starting to get um, starting to get a little bit closer here. So uh, let me erase some stuff, give myself a little bit of extra extra room. Okay, what I'm going to do on the right hand side now is just get common denominators and uh, just to just to clean it up a little bit. So this is x plus b over 2a 
squared. That's what's on the left-hand side still. On the right-hand side, if I get common denominators, I would have to multiply top and bottom of the C over A. I would have to multiply the top by 4A and the bottom by 4A so that I get my 4A squared term. So if I do that, I'll get my common denominator of 4A squared. And then on top, I would have B squared minus C times 4 times A, but I can write that as 4AC. Okay, so I think we're starting to get a little close here now. And at this point, um, to get rid of the square, we have to take the square root of both sides. Okay, so on the left side, we'll just be left with x plus b over 2a. Um, on the right side, remember if you take a square root, you get positive and negative. So we'll get the square root of the top, b squared minus 4ac. But also remember, if you have a square root, a big square root, you can take the square root of the top, which we did, over the square root of the bottom. Well, if you take the square root of the bottom, you'll just be left with 2a. Okay, the last thing that I need to do now is to move this, um, this b over 2a to the other side. So I'll subtract that and get negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And we recognize here that we've got common denominators. So we can actually go ahead and write this all over 2a and we can write it as negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And ta-da, now by completing the square, we've got solutions to our quadratic equation. So I think it's kind of neat, um, something that a lot of people use but probably, again, aren't quite sure where it comes from. So I don't know. Um, again, if you're looking for just how to use the quadratic equation, this, this probably doesn't help you a lot. Um, but again, it just illustrates an important problem and how you can work with general things to come up with very important formulas. And also, it just makes the, uh, the math nerd inside of me happy. So all right, I hope this was, if nothing else, moderately entertaining for you. Um, so I don't know. I hope it helps.